Hi guys, it's Ben here from T-Rex Space Station. How's everyone doing? Firstly, I do hope that you all had a very Merry Christmas indeed, and I'd like to all wish you a Happy New Year in a few days' time. Thank you also for bearing with me over the last few weeks. I know that I've not managed to get as many videos out as I would have liked. Um, December's been a very busy month for me. From the end of November up until kind of mid-December, just before my birthday, I've had lots of job interviews. Three job interviews, in fact. And it's been a pretty stressful time, kind of, as these interviews will decide where I go for like the next eight to ten years of my life. Um, so I've been up in London, been to Sheffield, and of course I've interviewed in Manchester as well. So we'll see what happens. Then I had my birthday pretty much straight after the interviews. Then I feel like I've been working ever since. I've not really had a day off up until Christmas. And I was on call the weekend before and everything. So I've just been so busy and, you know, I've had to fit all my Christmas shopping in and everything's just got really chaotic and on top of me. I just didn't find the time to make any videos. Then yesterday I finally sat myself down and thought, yep, it's time to make a, a video showing my Christmas presents and pickups. And my computer died. So I had a day of technological failures yesterday. Um, running around trying to sort things out. Thank God I've managed to get it to work again now. I think what might have happened was that the battery ran out mid um, system update or something like that because it just wouldn't boot. Um, so we had to burn off recovery disks and things. But it touch wood, fingers crossed, it all seems to be working now. Before I get started, I would like to say a big thank you to Swifto from Channel Swift for my birthday present. Yes, yeah, Swifto bought me uh, Geometry Wars 3 on Steam which is a really cool twin stick shooter type game. It's one that you might have seen on Lactobacillus Prime, uh, Mark's YouTube channel. It's a really addictive game that kind of mixes old school arcade type gameplay mechanics with uh, a modern approach. It's really fun, there are online leaderboards, and whenever I'm playing I can see Swifto's high score there, just egging me on to try and get that a little bit better. And it's a really addictive game, so yeah, maybe you guys uh, have picked that up already. Maybe you can add me on Steam and uh, yeah, we can see each other's uh, scores on that. Um, but thanks very much mate, it's really appreciated. So I've got quite a few um, video games over Christmas, as you'd expect. I've got a big pile of games to play through here. And I thought it would be cool to show them to you and talk a little bit about each one. So first up we have Pokemon Omega Ruby on the Nintendo 3DS. Um, as you guys will know, I'm a big fan of the of the Pokemon series, but I've been a little bit disillusioned with the games more recently. I was a huge fan of the original game, uh, you know, Pokemon Red and Blue Generation, and of Gold after that. Since then, I felt like the series has been very derivative, and not a lot has moved on. I played Black and White quite a lot. X and Y I played a bit and then got bored with and kind of left it. Um, but, I, you know, I did want to get back into things. I've heard this is a great game, and so, yeah, I asked for it for Christmas, and it is really fantastic. I've, been, I've played quite a lot of it over the last few days. Um, there are a lot of remakes in the Pokemon series, and I'm not sure how I feel about that. Sometimes I feel like they're just rehashing old things, but luckily for me, I never played the original generation, Ruby and whatever it was, on the um, on the Game Boy Advance because I didn't have one. So it's a completely fresh experience for me. Graphically, it's very, very beautiful. Everything's like fully 3D, really colourful, really nice, and it's just so much fun to play it looking as beautiful as it does. Yes, things are still very much the same in that the storyline is, is rubbish, it's the same old rehashed stuff with a different type of Team Rocket, I think it's Team Magma in there. Yes, it's still very easy, but the the end game and the meta game is actually very advanced now. You know, there's all the EV training and things which I've I've dabbled with but never got got into. But I hear that there's a lot of content here after you beat the Elite Four, and there's a lot to do afterwards. There's also a great deal of online functionality for trading and battles, so I think I'm going to have a lot of fun with this, and it's going to probably take up quite a lot of time. Um, so if you guys have got it, please let me know your friend codes or whatever it is you use on DS, and uh, maybe we can trade or battle. But so far, I'm really impressed with it, and it seems to be a, a lot of fun. Next up, we have a Sega Mega Drive game. It's Golden Axe 2. Um, I'm a big fan of the first Golden Axe game. You may have seen uh, me and Neve playing it on two-player. It's a great co-op game. Side-scrolling beat-em-up with a kind of fantasy legendary feel. Um, but I've never actually played any of the any of them except for um, Golden Axe 1. I think there is a, a third one as well on Japanese-only Mega Drives. Um, but yeah, I've not played it yet, so I can't tell you how good it is. But I'll probably do a gameplay soon. But I, I know I'm going to enjoy it since I loved the first one. And presumably this, this is an improvement on that. Um, so, you guys might know that I previously had an Atari 2600 that I got out of my parents' garage a few months ago now. I bought a voltage, adap a voltage adapter for it and managed to completely blow it up. Um, I don't know if there was uh, there was mo uh, sort of damp in there or something or if I got the wrong voltage or ampage. Um, but anyway, 
that was very depressing. But I've got a new Atari 2600 for Christmas. Fantastic. Um, and I'm really, really happy to have the system back. I spent a lot of Christmas Day and Boxing Day worrying about it because it was only playing in black and white. I tried three different TVs tuning it in, couldn't seem to get anything to change. Now I'm not exactly sure what the problem was. I know that t modern TVs can be very, t uh, very kind of gross in terms of the frequencies that they, that they tune into, and you kind of need an old cathode ray tube telly with very fine adjustments to the frequency to get it to hit that sweet spot of colour. Um, but even so, retuning it, retuning it, I couldn't get anything to change. Uh, I was looking online about all these different components that could be broken, adjusting the potentiometers. Um, we just kept trying it, turned it off and on again, blew in the cartridges, and then hey presto, it was in colour. I'm not exactly sure what the problem is, but certainly I noticed that games that are more vibrant seem to have a better chance of playing in colour. Sometimes when I turn it on, it starts off black and white and it needs a little bit of taking the cartridge in and out, turning it off and on again to get it to go. I'm pretty sure the system does work. I think it's probably that's still the problem with the signal being a little bit weak and modern TVs struggling to pick it up. So I'm probably going to try and get an old VCR and run it through that and see if that helps. Um, but I'm delighted to, fi to eventually find out that it does work and to have got it playing. So one of the new games that I got for the system from my parents was uh, Berserk. This is a really, really cool game. I suppose it would be, you could describe it as kind of an arena based shooter, I guess. Um, you can control a little man going through a maze and shooting at like robots that can fire out at you. I think it's randomly generated, which is awesome. And you know, you can kind of like choose which direction you go in after you clear the screen. It's very hard. Um, the robots get much faster as you get further and further through and they, they can fire way quicker. It's very difficult to dodge them and it's also quite hard to shoot diagonally but I've really enjoyed it so far and I'm going to, excuse me a little bit, I'm going to play a lot of this and maybe try and put a high score up. I'm not sure if uh, Intercoast has got a high scores table for this but this might be one that we can play soon. I've got a lot of boxed games with the system. Um, some of these I've, I've had before, some of them I haven't but I'll show you them anyway because, well, the boxes are really cool. First up we have Cubit. I have done a gameplay of this before. It's a very hard game. You play as a cute little monster thing and you got to jump on the isometric um, cubes and clear them all and then you get to go to the next level. And of course there's a lot of complications. There's little aliens, there's little bugs and things that will kill you. It's solid but it's really nice to have it uh, boxed and in a package. Next up is a boxed version of Combat. This is a really, really fun um, two-player combat game. You can play like in tanks, sh uh, boats, no, not boats, no, tanks, planes, all things like that. Um, it's got a lot of different modes, jet fighters, invisible tanks, bouncing bullets off the walls, and you basically got to shoot each other. It's like an original <laughs> um, PvP combat game, and it's a lot of fun. Don't need to tell you a lot about Pac-Man, do I, because this is such a classic. Again, lovely to have it in a nice box with a uh, manual and everything. Um, this is a really fun game. It's been so much fun revisiting that and playing it. Uh, it's just it's just a classic, isn't it? An absolute classic. Um, next up is one I've never heard of before. Action Force. It's got a cool picture here of um, kind of soldiers running away from explosions by a giant cobra. It's a very <laughs> interesting concept for a game. Um, it's basically a giant killer cobra that fires lasers down and tries to destroy your base and you play it as two player with the paddles and you have to cooperate to kill it and it looks like a, a really good laugh. Unfortunately the paddles for my Atari are a little bit oversensitive and haven't been working but once I can get those going I think it'll be a lot of fun. Another classic here, this is Frogger. Really nostalgic that it's got a Woolworths uh, sticker on it. Reduced price was £34, now fourteen ninety five. Who remembers good old Woolies? Of course, I think they've all shut down now. I think it went into liquidation, didn't it? But there used to be one around near where I live in Chilton, where I used to get lots of video games. Um, but yeah, Frogger's a great game. Jumping across the road, trying to get to the end, avoid getting squished. These are just simple games, but they're really addictive and really fun. Super Breakout, um, this is another paddle game, a, a classic, you know, trying to move your little paddle across and bounce the ball up and shoot all the blocks. Again, I can't really tell you how good it is at the moment um, because my paddles don't seem to be working. I need to maybe try and get them from my old Atari and see if those ones will do any better. I have previously had a Star Wars game on the system. That was the Death Star Battle one, which wasn't that great, but there were a few, and uh, this one is The Empire Strikes Back. Um, 
again with a Woolworth sticker on it. This looks really fun actually. This looks like you're kind of taking down those Imperial Walkers using fighter ships. Um, not had a chance to check it out yet, but I'm sure I will do a video soon to show you. And Millipede, this seems to be a relatively modern one. This was like almost 90s, uh, 88 maybe. And again, I have no idea what this is about. I've not played it yet, so I can't tell you any more than that. Coming on to PS2, Final Fantasy X. Um, a game that divided opinions, but I've always really wanted. I've seen a lot of reviews uh, from this of this game, and a lot of people said it was actually one of their favourites. Um, I've played Final Fantasy XII on the PS2 and loved it, and I thought it's time to give this one a go. It does have the um, random encounters and turn-based combat, which I'm not a particularly huge fan of, but because so many people loved it, I'm really keen to check it out and see how good it is. I know that it's got really cheesy voice acting and terrible dialogue, but actually if you look past that, the story's meant to be quite good and it's meant to be pretty addictive. So uh, I've been looking for an RPG to play after I completed the last story recently. Kirby's Epic Yarn. Um, beautiful looking material graphic-y style uh, platformer on the Wii. I'm still collecting for the Wii. My collection's getting bigger and bigger as we go along and this is one of those ones that's said to look really beautiful that I've wanted for a while. I think the gameplay is a little bit simplistic and kind of easy but it's, it's got fun mechanisms and a really fun kind of um, stylistic approach. Last but not least, a cool present from my girlfriend, it's Wolfenstein The New Order. I'm a big fan of the Wolfenstein games, I've played all of them, uh, I love the original one, I've got the original one in multiple different formats, um, and this game looks really cool, really creepy. I think it's based on the premise that the Nazis won the war, which is a scary sort of thought, isn't it? Um, I'm just looking at these gigantic robots and super soldiers on the box there. I think I'm going to enjoy getting stuck into that one and playing it soon. I've got too many games to play because I've got loads of games for my birthday as well. Um, Alien Isolation, New Super Mario Bros and the Game Boy Advance SP. So yes, I'm going to be very busy playing and I'll, sh I'll surely show you some of these games on gameplay videos soon. Okay guys, take care. I'll speak to you all soon. Have a great new year and thanks for bearing with me over a very busy Christmas period. See you guys.